Hi loves, it's Lacey and welcome to our space. So today we are going to be doing some bumblebee DIY, so let's get started. First off, I have a Dollar Tree wood round, some Waverly white chalk paint, and we are going to paint this entire wood round white after I remove the little hanger off of it. I'm just gonna be doing the front of this because you won't see the back. And then I use my Cricut Maker 3 to cut out some designs in from Cricut Design Space. And I also made my own design here, which is some B quotes that are gonna go around the edge of this white round. Right here, I am using my Cricut scraper to scrape them down to the Cricut transfer tape so I can be able to transfer this vinyl over to the wood round. Now, this is not a complete Cricut video. This is just one of the things that I wanted to do for one of my DIYs. I'm switching over to my large scraper to help make sure I get all the bubbles out of the transfer tape and adhere this vinyl down. And then I'm gonna flip it over and do it on the back side. To help with the removal then i'm going to peel the backing off of it leaving my words on the transfer tape and after that then we are going to take it and place it on top of my wood round i made this so it went really close to the edge and i'm going to use my scraper tool to adhere all of the letters down to the wood round and then pull off the transfer tape don't worry if it some of them want to stick to the transfer tape you can just scrape them with your finger or else go back with your scraper like I did on this E and get it to transfer over pretty easily. And then I went and I cut out a circle of a sort of a gray, a dark gray metallic that I had. Um, I'm not sure if I saved this image, but I saved the um, image of all of the words that go around. You could do this with paint too. You do not have to make this with a cutting machine. But I did turn around and I cut out some yellow, which is going to be part of a sunflower for this. I'm going to take my transfer tape that I just used because I reused it, and I'm going to adhere the yellow part to the transfer tape. Now this wasn't Cricut vinyl, it was some vinyl I had left over, but I went back to my Cricut vinyl and I am going to be layering the bumblebee portion of this over it with the yellow on the transfer tape so I can transfer it all at once. This image is part of Cricut Design Space and I just took this image and placed it with the other two images, both of which I designed myself. I will try to link the whole thing down below so you can get it if you want to use it if you have a cutting machine as well. But the yellow top part of my bumblebee, it didn't transfer over properly so I cut that off and I am just adhering it to the back of this bumblebee. Then I put the whole thing down in the middle of this circle and I wanted it to lean to one side and here I am just transferring it with the transfer tape. And lastly, I am taking some of this new Dollar Tree kind of, it looks like Baker's Twine cord in the black and white stripe and I'm going to glue it on the back of it as a hanger and this is how it turned out. I love how this DIY turned out and if you don't have a cutting machine you could still make something really close to this. Like I said before you just paint the wood round any color you want. I did white and then you can paint the center part any color you want and I did like a metallic dark silver and then you could take stickers from Dollar Tree or Joann's or any of the um, craft stores like Hobby Lobby and place them around the edge with the different quotes. And then for the middle, there is all kinds of bumblebee stuff out right now where you can use like a dish towel or a napkin and decoupage this on with Mod Podge or else you can actually make it 3D and use some little bumblebee figurines. So on to DIY number two. For this one, we're gonna use another wood round and a Dollar Tree candlestick. I also have Dollar Tree stickers. These are 3D stickers. I use them all the time with the butterflies, but those are insects. I have some Arteza paints in gold and Aztec gold. They come in a box like this. This is a set of eight. I love this. I have had these for quite a while and these paints give great coverage. You get eight of them in there. And I also have some of these hexagon tiles that came from Home Depot. 
this sheet was two dollars and forty nine cents so we're starting off by removing all of the tiles off of the back meshing it's easy to do I'm gonna lay some of them out and I'm gonna start with the gold paint I'm just gonna take a drop of it and I'm going to tap it all the way around the hexagon tile and once I get it on there lightly I'm gonna use my foam brush and pat it down the entire side of the brush to make it nice and even I'm going to do this and that is a light color of the gold and then I'm going to use extra gold on for the next one so it looks a little darker. Then I'm going to use what's left on the brush and tap it down one side of one of these hexagon tiles and then change to a different brush and take a little bit and do the Aztec gold. As you can see it's more of a orangey gold, kind of more like honey. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for another one, do a deeper, darker set of it, just by using more paint and tapping the side of the brush. And then what's left on the brush, tap the other side of my hexagon tile. So I'll have altogether four different styles of tile. I decided to do it like this because of course, we're making honeycomb. Now I know a lot of honeycomb is just a solid color when you see it, but I've seen honeycomb tiles like this done at some local little art fairs and I thought it was really cute so I'm doing mine that way. Next I am taking some of Waverly Antique Wax onto this wood round and I'm going to cover the entire thing and then wipe it off with a baby wipe. I thought I wanted this wood round to be brown. I thought I did. You will see in a minute that I totally changed it. But once it is dried I'm going to start in the center and I'm going to use one of more of the more variegated tiles and I'm going to glue it down with hot glue onto the back of the tile and put it in the center and then I'm sped this footage up but I am making sure that when I adhere these tiles I line them up perfectly if they are slightly off they will not fit together really well so you want to take your time and make sure they're aligned and start gluing them any kind of way you want down on your wood round. Now you can paint them all the same color. You can do them all in the darker honey more look or you can do them all in the golden look. And I left some spaces as you can see here because I thought this would be really, really cute on it. But when I get to this point, I could tell that one of mine would not adhere where it needed to go because I was off just a little and I also didn't like it. <laughs> so what I ended up doing is I took my heat gun and I heated up the tiles and I just pulled them off because they'll come off really easy if you heat them up and pull them off and I painted the wood round black. I thought it looked a whole lot better and it popped the color of the goals off and I am just re-gluing them and doing sort of the same pattern that I did before. If you start in the middle, you'll get a pattern kind of like I end up with. And if you want to skip some tiles and leave some spaces like I did, it I just think it gives visual interest to it. And I'm going to actually use one of the spaces um, for something different. And here you can see I had just put this tile down and so I'm prying it up instead of using my heat gun because it was in the wrong space base. It needed to move over just a little bit so the other one would fit. And this is what it looks like when it's done. I also had some extra tiles and so I just put those around and I used some Gorilla Hot Glue. All of this is Gorilla Hot Glue so it'll stay together. And I put them on the bottom of the candlestick. So I am making a little like cake stand that is honeycomb. And this is what it looks like. I, I love how it turned out. And now it's time to decorate it. All we're going to do is take some of these stickers from Dollar Tree. These are in Crafter Square. They are 3D. I pull the top part of the 3D sticker off. You can see there's still sticker down on that. Those are actual stickers on the bottom, but they have like a metallic to them. And I don't like that part for this part of this project. So I am pulling off the top part that is kind of bent up and you, if you can't tell now, you'll see at the end of the final reveal of this one that these stickers um, are 3D and they pop up. They are like angled up and then I'm just using the B ones. That one is like the queen B so I put her on the candlestick and the other ones are like just worker bees and little bees. So I ended up buying 
four packs of these, I think it was all together, and I think I used three packs of them on this project because there are other insects on there besides bees, and I didn't use any of those. But it leaves a lot of other stickers to use for other projects. So I just adhered them around where I wanted them to be, mainly by the edge, except for the one that was in the black. And then I decided to add another small one on the bottom of my cake stand. And then just for giggles, I decided to use one that has the metallic on the inside of the candlestick, the, well, the queen bee one, because you're not gonna see it. Though, if you wanted to not glue down your top and just use it and take it off, you could put a glass candle holder from Dollar Tree on there and you can see the bee through it. You can fill it up with candy and when you eat the candy out or stir sticks and put it by like where you serve tea or something and it would be cute as well. And this is how it turned out. I love it. I think it's really cool. I'm gonna put it in my kitchen area for this season of spring or whatever, kind of near where my coffee bar and where you can have tea and stuff it on it. You can set honey on there and things and it's bee themed. I think it turned out really cute and it wasn't very expensive to make. So on to our last DIY. I got this vase from Dollar General. It was $4. When I saw it and saw it was honeycomb, I loved it. The little clear thing I just had, it's a little jar. That is a wreath from Target's Dollar Spot. And then I have some honey stirs. They are craft from Hobby Lobby. I have some little bumblebees, more Arteza um, paint. And I took this paint and this one glue stick and put it in this little jar and microwaved it for five minutes. What that does is it makes fake honey. I cut the glue stick up, I put it in there and I microwaved it with a couple drops of the um, paint and then I stirred it up. And now I'm taking one of the Kraft honey dippers. These are Kraft, these are not ones that you would buy with honey. I don't know what the difference is, but they came from Hobby Lobby. And I'm dipping it in and getting it covered and then I'm just setting it down on one of the extra uh, hexagon tiles that I had that I didn't paint. And I'm gonna do a couple of those. Actually, I think I do like four or five all together and I set them down and just set them and let them dry. Don't worry exactly what they look like because I will show you a trick of what we're gonna do. Then I took a Dollar Tree paint um, brush and I used the end of it and I am dabbing some of the glue around the top of our vase where we turned it upside down. Make sure you do this on the upside down because we are making uh, like a beehive. You guys know how crazy and extra I am, so this is what I decided to do with this one. It's an upside down vase, and I am taking my Ryobi heat gun. You can use a craft heat gun, but I have a Ryobi one as well. And I am then going to heat up each one of these sections until it starts to drip down this vase on each section. Don't worry too much what it looks like at this point. <laughs> You just want it to have drips because you're going to be able to take it off when it dries and cut the pieces to look more aesthetically pleasing. You can do this off of the vase if you like. You can do it on like the Dollar Tree chopping mat on the shiny side so the glue will come right off and drag it across there. But I just decided to do it on the vase. And as you can see, look, it started to drip down. This side looks perfect. And then these sides here, they're kind of wonky. So I'm just gonna peel them off, cut off the wonky pieces, and then put them back on with the heat gun. Same thing with the dippers here. It has a wonky piece on it, so I'm gonna cut that off and I'm gonna save it. Every piece that you cut off, save, because you can still reheat that and make it look like the honey. And then I just heat it back up slightly so it starts to melt. And then I'm gonna put that piece back on there where I want it to look like it's melted more, heat it up and they'll melt together. You can do that with the whole vase and I did that so they don't look as wonky. The top looks a little wonky but don't worry about it because we're going to cover that up. Now what I'm doing is I put more glue in with more paint, just a couple drops of paint, stirred it up and now I'm putting it in the little jar because I want the little jar to look like it has honey in it and you can't microwave the little jar because there's metal on it so I might microwaved it in the other jar with no metal on it in glass don't do it in plastic it will melt microwave it in glass 
and then you can pour it into a jar or leave it in the jar you have and I'm right just right now having it come down the jar so it looks like it's fuller now I'm gonna take the little wreath that came from Target dollar spot I think you got three of these in a pack and it just happened to fit up here perfectly and I'm going to glue it down like I said you wouldn't see that the top looks messy because we're covering it up with this little wreath you can use any wreath you want you can use greenery from Dollar Tree and make it look like a wreath I just already had this in my stash and so that's what I am doing and I'm just gluing it down I think it's eucalyptus or it might be boxwood it doesn't really make a difference which one you want to use I made sure I did it like this so you can see this is looks like honey like a dark honey and it fits into the top of this little wreath and that's what we want so then I'm going to take one of the dippers that fits on the top and I'm going to just use a dab of clear hot glue because the glass is clear you won't see this and I'm going to stick it down to the top of our little jar now if you don't have a little jar I'm gonna show you how to do this a little bit differently where you don't have to make honey for a jar at the end and it involves that honey bear that's sitting next to there then I put two of them together um, off camera you saw how I made them I just stuck them together and use my heat gun to make them stick together and I'm sticking them to the side of my little honeycomb that I'm calling this and I am doing one more on the other side at the bottom and I also took a piece of cardstock I cut it out about the circle shape of the top of my paint there and I'm just going to glue it on the front here that I'm gonna call the opening of this beehive and so I'm going to take some hot glue and just stick it on there you can use felt to do this or any other fabric you can actually just take a black marker and draw on it but I like the idea of the cardstock because then it you don't really see the honeycomb underneath it and it looks like an opening to the beehive then I'm going to go ahead and glue on with some more hot glue here my other little stir on the edge down at the bottom I'm doing a bunch a lot I know because I'm extra you guys if you've been on my channel before you know I'm extra and I like my projects to look different and have a lot so now I have these little mini sunflowers they came from a Dollar Tree's crafter square section and I'm just cutting a bunch of them off and placing them in with the greenery because you know a lot of times they show sunflowers with bumblebees and I thought these were really cute and delicate and they come in a pack of I think there was eight in here and I'm gonna be using pretty much all of them on this project I'm also going to take some and glue them I think three right here to the lower dipper and a little cluster and then I'm gonna take a couple of them and paste them in a different spot on this project as well I had two packs of them I think eight come in a pack I might be wrong next I am going to pull out these little bumblebees I got these at Joanne fabrics a while back and they're buttons so you can look for them in the button section I didn't want any bumblebees that look cartoonish I wanted some that look a little bit more like bees for this and so I ended up picking up these little buttons and they were really really cute there come six in this pack and I do have two packs of them I think I only use six of them though all together maybe even just five so I'm just placing them where I find them aesthetically pleasing one of them's on one of the flowers one's on the actual hive part one's on the little dipper I put one up in where the greenery is going to be at the top and I basically use the bumblebees just what um is going to be the front of this project I don't put any on the back side of it though I do have some flowers on the back side I did use one of the flowers and put it on the front of the little jar here and I think I might have placed a bumblebee near it too I can't even remember yeah I did I put a bumblebee next to it see I told you I'm so extra this project has a lot on it but I just thought it was so cute and all these little ideas came to my head when I was making it and I really wanted to incorporate a bunch with it next I took out one of these Dollar Tree steaks that they have these are in crafter square too I think four come in a pack maybe six 
I don't know, this one was already open and I, I'm just writing fresh honey on it with a Dollar Tree marker in white. This is in Craft Your Square too. They come individually. They have like white and gold and stuff. So I'm writing fresh honey on there. And then I'm going to just take it and glue it at the bottom behind our one dipper on the side and tilt it out a little with a little hot glue. And then this project is all done. I love how it turned out. It is got a lot going on, but you guys know how extra I am. I left at the vase white because I thought the colors popped super well with it like that. And it's a beehive where you can get fresh honey. And if you don't have a little jar, then that's where this little bear came in. It is from Dollar Tree. I just decorated it and I actually wrote Lacey's honey on this and it fills in for the little jar. So that is it for this video. I want to thank you guys so much for watching and liking and always sharing my videos. And if you are not a subscriber here, go ahead, hit the subscribe button and hang out with us for a while. I'm going to be bringing you guys more DIYs. I know I've been gone for a little while, but I am back and I'm going to do a life update because I'm going to be here for good now. YouTube is going to be my job and yes I will elaborate on that a little bit later I have to go and get organized for a, a new video that I'm going to be filming here later today so sorry I've been gone but I am glad I'm back I'm hoping you love these DIYs comment down below which one was your favorite I think the beehive was definitely mine also if you guys like you can follow me over on instagram i do do updates if you don't have instagram it's okay i'll be updating over here as well but a lot of you know some of my news already if you've been over on instagram you might have seen what has been happening to me in this last month and i'm so excited about my new ventures coming up soon so that's it and i will catch you guys in my next video bye loves